We're doing it, we're doing it. Got another Test the Chef episode, and we're going in hard. We're going for the big boy himself, Gordon Ramsay, in his 10 minute carbonara, because I couldn't fit the R and the A on the end again. Probably the most famous chef in the world right now, because no one is safe on Test the Chef. Not even you, Gordon, not even you. Now, right off the bat, I have some reservations about this recipe, but I'll talk about those as we go through and at the end, because this recipe has been on the receiving end of quite a lot of flack online. It really has. But listen, remember to watch the whole video so you can see how this turns out. And if you haven't done so already, hit subscribe, allow all notifications. That way, when I upload a new video, you get notified. And that includes you, Gordon. Why aren't you subscribed? I'm subscribed to you. But listen, we're gonna dive straight into this. Let's check out the ingredients and we can get cooking. So these are all the ingredients. I've prepped them all up, ready to go. Everything's sliced and diced, all measured out, weighed out. And here's my first point of concern, is just the amount of ingredients to make a carbonara. And when Gordon did this recipe, it was on one of his live streams, which I think was designed to help people cook through the pandemic. You know, nice, simple recipes, nice and cheap, which I commend. Us YouTube cooks, chefs should all be doing that and helping people make nice, tasty meals. But herein lies my issue, is that you've inherently made it more expensive by adding all these extra ingredients. Carbonara is a very simple dish in its own right. A traditional carbonara doesn't have all this kind of stuff in it. So that's my first issue. But nevertheless, we'll press on. Now I've got the recipe up here on my phone and it says, step one, get pot of boiling water and add pasta. Okay, but do we add salt to the pasta water? Well, I'm not going to, because it's not telling me to, but I imagine you should. So whilst that's coming to the boil, I'm gonna go on to step two, because I can start that now, because timings are gonna be a bit off because of filming constraints and everything like that, because I've got to move the camera in between shots. So I'll use my judgment on some of that. And step two says, head a non-stick pan to a medium high heat. I'm assuming that's a spelling error and it's meant to say heat a non-stick pan to a medium high heat. So that's what I'm gonna do. On we go. Then it says to add a tablespoon of olive oil. Again, I'm not sure this is necessary, but we'll add it. And it says when the oil is hot to add the pancetta. Well, it says bacon on there, but it says you can use either bacon or pancetta. It says add a little pepper to taste. Then it says after about two minutes of cooking, I'm gonna add the garlic. Garlic, oh, I don't know. Then the mushrooms, and then the chili as well. Then it says cook until the bacon is crispy and color on the mushroom, add salt to taste. All right then, Gordy, I will add a pinch of salt. I don't think it needs it because of the bacon, but I'll add a small pinch. Now that the water's boiling, I'm gonna get the pasta on as well. Where's the lentils? Step three says to grate about a third of a cup, 40 grams, of grano padano over the egg yolks. Well, I'm using parmesan because that's what it says is optional. I don't know why you'd add grano padano. I'm gonna pop the egg yolks in there, pop the cheese in, then add the creme fraiche and mix. Okay. Then it says to add a teaspoon of cold water to the mixture to make sure it's of a liquid consistency. Okay, well, that's ready to go. Step four then says to add the peas as the bacon mixture is almost finished cooking which they're not really frozen now, but they were. And then it says to add three tablespoons of the pasta water as it finishes cooking. It smells amazing, looks delicious, don't get me wrong, but I have severe reservations. So what's the last bit? Once the pasta is finished, saving some of the pasta water for the sauce, season pasta and then add to the bacon mixture and toss. Well, why wouldn't you have added salt to the pasta water in the beginning? Then you wouldn't need to. So what I'm gonna do is pop my pasta in and I'm gonna add a pinch of salt that way and also some pepper. And then he says to toss it. Well, I'm not tossing nothing, Gordon. I'm not confident like that. I'm just gonna mix it with a pair of plastic tip tongs. It'll end up all over the kitchen like the contents of my last recipe did. Then add the egg mixture after about 30 seconds, turn the gas down, mix until cooked, add parcel at the end and then plate. Okay, well, I think that's probably too hot. So I'm gonna turn the gas completely off, we'll add that. Now, I'm sure it said to keep some of the pasta water. Sure it did. Yeah, once finished, saving some pasta water for the sauce, but it's not told you when to add it. Now, I know when to add it. You want to add it in as the eggs cook, because that's gonna emulsify and make your sauce creamy. Okay, mix that in, get the parsley in as well. Give that a good old final mix, and this thing is ready. We're gonna plate it up 
and see what it's like. And we'll give my verdict to our mate Gordon. Let's see then, Gordon. Let's see what you have created. It's gone a little bit stodgy. That's my fault because filming the B-roll, the thumbnail and all that kind of stuff. So I won't knock points off for that. I'm going to have to try mushroom, aren't I? Let's go in. It's delicious. It's really nice. If you were served that, you'd be happy. It's nicely seasoned. It's creamy. It's just a really nice pasta dish, Gordon. Because herein lies my problem. I'm about to get on my soapbox now, so be warned. Now, as delicious as that was, it is not a carbonara. Gordon. Carbonara is a dish. It's a recipe in itself. It's not an idea. You can't just go chucking in anything you like because it's not a carbonara. What you've made is a delicious creamy mushroom pasta dish. Not a carbonara. Carbonara is a Roman dish. It consists of guanciale or if you can't get hold of that, oh the cat's, sorry I locked him out again, I keep doing this. You're coming in. It consists of guanciale, pancetta if you can't get guanciale, pecorino cheese, again parmesan if you can't get hold of that, eggs, pasta, and black pepper. That's it. That's all you need to make a carbonara. Not 4,000 ingredients that you've added, Gordon. Now, I'm not gonna get all political or anything like that, but we've got to protect these kind of recipes because we'll lose them. If we start just throwing peas and cheddar cheese and ham and goodness knows what else, cream, and call it a carbonara, the original recipe is just gonna get skewed and lost amongst all the nonsense. We wouldn't like it if the Italians just kind of went, oh, do you know what? I'm gonna put some prawns, carrots, beetroot in some pastry, wrap it up, bake it in the oven, and I'm gonna call it Cornish pasty. Hello? We wouldn't like it, would we? We would not like it. So Gordon, it's not a carbonara, and I'm gonna knock points off you for that. <sighs> zen, zen. No wonder Italians lost their minds over this. Because you can't mess it up, right? It's so simple in its own right. It's cheap, it's filling, it's tasty. Don't mess around with it. So what do I think then, score-wise? Would have got four stars, maybe four and a half, but I'm gonna have to knock him down to three. So flavor-wise, it's bang on. It's a nice little pasta dish, but he's losing two stars for calling it a carbonara. You should know better. So there we are, we've done it. We've tackled Gordon on this recipe. I may come after you again, Gordon. Now, I really enjoy doing these because, like I've said before, it means I'm off the hook, all right? Because it's not my recipe, and if it's bad, it's not my fault. So leave a comment down below. Who do you want me to tackle next? Jamie Oliver, Ina Garten, even the hallowed Nigella herself. Oh, that woman, that woman. We can even go after the dead ones as well, if you like. Julia Child, even Mrs. Beaton. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Beaton, poor Mrs. Beaton. Poor Julia. But we're gonna wrap this up. Now, if you haven't done so already, hit subscribe. Make sure to hit the notification bell. That way, when I upload a video, YouTube tells you about it. And check out at the end of this video, because I'll put the playlist up for all the other Test the Chef recipes that I've done. But I'm gonna love and leave you. Thanks again for watching, guys. And I'll see your gorgeous faces in the next video. And bye for now. This is probably stone cold by now. Ooh.